show your humanity before you, you show your theology um if your theology is great it will show it in your humanity you got you know just don't yeah reverse that reverse the polarity in that thing and so show who you are show the person that you are people need to see just the raw you you know and let people know that you are a human first some people try to be so christian that they forget that they're human i'm like bro like and the other thing and the last thing i would say is to you know is to be scripturally consistent scripturally consistent you know especially on tiktok the the tendency is for people to kind of jump on a trend and hoping that like it'll get the views it will get the views for sure but because it's not consistent with who you are you are going to shoot yourself in the foot welcome back to advent next a theological podcast curated for curious faith discussions this week we are continuing our talk with kevin wilson a pastor at Oceanside SDA in Southern California whose TikTok cross-culture Christian unexpectedly went from 200 to 144,000 followers in a matter of months. Today, we are discussing the surprising places his ministry is making an impact, along with some tips for churches and individuals to begin using these platforms in a meaningful way. We want to thank the Adventist Learning Community for making this program possible. And if you're not already following us on Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube, be sure to find us at the handle at Advent Next. You can follow our guest today on Instagram or TikTok at Cross Culture Christian and myself at Kendra R. Snow with an X. But right now, this is Advent Next. You know, as you're on this journey and as God is like showing you the impact that uh, your story and the vehicle that you've used to tell your story, Chai and TikTok, you know, what are some of the strangest places that you found yourself making an impact, maybe in ways that you didn't expect? I'm glad you asked. Um, <laughs> okay, so I can think of different stories, but this but this story must be told. Um, <laughs> okay. A month ago, a person reached out to me on Instagram, sent me a DM, and mm-hmm. she asked me, are you Adventist? Question mark, question mark, question mark. And... I responded back. I've never, I've never met this person before. I don't know who this person is. And I said, yes, I, I am an Adventist. Um, and then she's like, how? And I'm like, oh, <laughs> you know, how do you answer that question over a DM, right? Like, so I, and so I just said, you know, I'm a pastor. And, uh, and so she was like, are you, you're a pastor? Oh my gosh. And, and so these are these short, these short questions, right? And so then I didn't, I, I didn't respond after that, you know, because I was <laughs> sidetracked with, with the other things that I needed to do. But then she responded back and she said, well, you would never believe where I heard about you. Mm. And, I'm, I'm, and she said, I am also, I'm a former Adventist. Okay. I'm a former Adventist, but I heard about you from somewhere else. Here's where I heard about you from. And so she sent me a link it's a Spotify, to a podcast, a Spotify a podcast on Spotify. And I um, clicked on it. And it was a podcast run by two witches. Wow. Okay. Two witches <laughs> who... Wow. Uh, yeah, yeah. The whole podcast was uh, was on witchcraft. But what I didn't know, and I learned so much about witchcraft. Like, I thought that uh, all of it was just basically hexing people and, and just being very bad and, and casting spells on people that they don't like. Um but apparently there's just a lot more to witchcraft that I didn't know. Like there's mm. apparently this, this, uh, this denomination, if you want to call it, <laughs> within, within witchcraft, which deals with just um, earth science and, and just being in touch with who you are. So very mm. spiritual, very esoteric. I mean, I mean pretty, uh, very like innocent stuff for the most part, you know, like there's nothing. That, so anyhow, so I was looking at these episodes and this one episode in particular and she told me this person who sent me the link. She said, "Fast forward it till, till the end of the um, of the of the episode." Okay. And I fast forwarded it. And towards the end of the episode, what she, what these two witches do is they they talk about things that they found meaningful over the past mm. week. And so this one particular person, she said, "You know, uh, I met this person on TikTok while I was scrolling through TikTok, and his name is Cross Culture Christian. Actually, I think his name is wow. Kevin Wilson, but he goes by Cross Culture <laughs> Christian. But I have to tell you this: it's like some of the best things that I've listened to. And then she she wow. went on to talk about yeah, she went on to talk about how she felt like the content that I was producing was very meaningful. That she talked about how it gave her space to." Um, explore her own identity and she talks she talked wow. about things like 
you know, forgiveness and all that stuff. And she's like, you know, you, everybody, you know, you guys should follow this guy. He's really good. Um, yeah. Cross culture Christian. If you are, if you're listening, thank you so much for what you do. And I'm listening to all of this and I'm just like, what just what <laughs> you know like if you if you had to if you were to tell me in seminary like oh you know what um uh, you're gonna you're gonna do ministry and then one day you're gonna be featured in a, a podcast on witchcraft uh yeah i would have totally believed you <laughs> no nope, absolutely not so you know so that's like yeah this whole thing is he's made inroads into places into groups into people that I think the church has historically marginalized or discriminated against um, yes. or haven't, um, you know, they're, they've not done a good job of taking care of them um, wow. or equipping them, you know. Because think and about I this person it, yeah. who reached out to you. The person who reached out to you was a former Adventist who was now being ministered to by this witch's podcast, right? Correct. Yep. And it's like, what are we <laughs> not giving them? that they're finding in other places. And I'm so glad that you're actually feeding back into that community, right? Um, that, that, that now the witches are listening to you and they're being spiritually nourished. And I think it just goes to show that, you know, they're, and, and these are people that you're making inroads with that if you were to, you know, stand on a street corner or hand out a glow track or just be in this place of just kind of more overt uh, Turner burned style type evangelism, you would never be able to have a conversation with them, but Absolutely. You're, you're having one over a cup of chai. And I think that that, and you're giving them the essence and the goodness of what Jesus has to offer without having to say, and you need to make these changes. Like, I feel like Jesus ministered, right? He gave what he had to give and let people make decisions from that point of view. But sometimes you don't think about ministry that way. Absolutely. So yeah, no, no. Thank you so much, Kendra, for even sharing this. I just came. This this kind of thought just came to me right now. A lot of people who are listening right now to you, to this podcast. Some of them, maybe not a lot of people. Maybe some of them might be thinking, "Oh, now does this mean that he's like agreeing with everything that they're saying? Does this mean mm-hmm. that uh, Pastor Kevin is uh, he's compromising his values? He's compromising his Adventism?" Let me say this, and I want to clarify this for anybody who's watching who's wondering the same things. Empathy does not mean endorsement. Mm. Yes. Okay. When you, and empathy simply means to be willing to step into somebody else's story mm-hmm. without judgment be- because you legitimately want to hear where they're coming from. You know, want to yeah. hear their story. Empathy does not mean endorsement. It does not, just because you stepped into somebody else's story now, does not mean now that. Uh, like you are just now going to agree with everything that person is doing or saying, none of that stuff, no. But we are so threatened. Like, I mean, just, let me speak about Adventists. Like, so many of my Adventist friends, uh, bless your heart. Like, I'm part of y'all, you know. Like, we are so threatened by it, uh, threatened by talking with the other. And, like, every single one of us has an other in my mind. The moment I say, who's your other, there is a profile of a person or a group of people that come into your mind. It's just being human. Like everybody has an other, right? And so, uh, I I would I'm I'm gonna challenge people who, uh, who who think that you, they're compromising their values by saying this. Like if you think that your theology is gonna be threatened because you have chosen to empathize with somebody else, you either a have made an idol out of your own theology, mm. or b you have completely misunderstood the point. And the purpose of the incarnation of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Because Jesus, when he li- like he could literally contextualized himself, like God, in order to come here. I mean, he Jesus was empathy and fleshed. Like, like he literally showed up and he said, yeah. and he said he, he like he could have been like, okay, I'm gonna. I'm going to stay af- uh, away from these people and uh, function at a distance and kind of figure out a technique or a strategy or a five-year game plan to, to save the universe. But no, his, liter- his game plan was to literally show up and move into our, into our neighborhood. Wow. I mean, why? And so if Jesus did that, the, the very least we can do is to empathize. Mm. Not in spite of our theology, but because of it. Mm. So, wow. Yeah. 
And you brought up something so important, the, the textualizing, contextualizing theology. And we don't have a robust way of thinking about that, you know, just, and, you know, you've taken the missions class, right? And I'm sure that that's a part of what your everyday life, and that is what you're doing right now with TikTok. You're saying, how is the gospel, how can we now create a relevancy for this message in this context? Instead of being like, all social media is bad, all TikTok is bad, or all, you know, anything outside of this prescribed medium is bad, you know, how do we begin to minister in that context, in a way that is meaningful and powerful. And I think just the fact that your brain is there, I think so many more minds need to be in that space so that we can really start being effective in making these relationships, not with the hope that we're going to get something out of it, but just truly being uh, the kind of the love of God and the hands and feet manifest in that sense. Absolutely. Yeah, Paul talks about this idea of the ministry of reconciliation, right? You know, everybody, the moment you say you're a Christian, the moment you say, I'm a follower of Jesus, what you have, you have a certain, you have some privileges that are given to you, but you also have some responsibilities that are given to you. And one of the responsibilities is for you to be a, min, uh, 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 a minister of reconciliation, regardless of who you are, what you're doing, regardless of your profession. Mm. And what that basically means, and here, here's the thing, what a ministry of reconciliation ultimately means is that you are choosing to bridge the gaps between enemies and friends. So, you know, that is like the thing that you, one of the things that you have to do, you must do as a part of the way of following the way of Jesus. And if that's true, then then one of the best ways to do it is to start uh, with empathy, start with uh, finding out like why why people are reacting negatively or positively to, some, to something that happens in culture, to choose to uh, lead with empathy rather than to lead with orthodoxy or mm. to lead with truth. Those are important, uh, but mm. you, 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 you don't lead with that. These, the, your theology and your truth and your, all that stuff, like it, they're, they're basically kind of, they're, they're structures to kind of house you and to build a home in which you can reside. But other people have already constructed their own homes but when but when we do ministry expecting that unless they come into our home that we can't minister, yeah. you are going to uh, be very, very sad and disappointed if not you're, if, if, if you're already not. But then if you say, you know what, I have my home. This is nice. There are things that kind of need to change. Like there's a picture that needs to be moved in a different place. There's a couch that could be moved into a different place. Uh, there's some, but the foundation is, is there and I really like the vibe. I can I, I feel at home here. Therefore, I can now leave and go minister to somebody else because I know I have a place to come back to. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 I really love that illustration, you know, because I just pictured somebody building their home in a community and, and it being a place that, you know, that, that you're actually being a neighbor, right? And you're going yeah. out to other homes and you're inviting them into yours and you keep your yard very well and people say, wow. Like there are so many ways what it means to just be in someone's space and to, to minister with this expectation of, I'm just here, I'm just here. And I'm here to listen. And I think as you're talking, I'm thinking this applies in so many areas of my life of just even interrelationally, you know, making sure that I'm walking into every space ready to empathize, ready to listen, rather than uh, looking at the world with a sense of defensiveness, uh, waiting to yeah. judge. But yeah. Yeah. So yeah. as your church, you know, uh, you know, as you're pastoring in your church and you're seeing your digital ministries kind of take off, is there ever any kind of dissonance or a sense of like discontentment with the fact that maybe your church is growing a lot slower than your digital ministries and... How have you reconciled that? And, and maybe what are some things that you're thinking, man, we need to change this in our church? Or, yeah, what have been your thoughts around that? Yeah, so I'm not threatened by that at all. And here's why. Um, what I do in, in TikTok, my digital ministry, is dependent on what I do. Um, it's dependent on my expertise or... And, and 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 my work ethic, my consistency, and I'm pretty much like the production head, right? Uh, even if I outsource different things, like I, it comes down to me. If I don't do it, it won't get done. My ministry at church is different. 
it is not dependent not just on me now it's dependent on a collective there are other people involved there's a board of elders there's a senior pastor i'm a youth pastor there there are parents there are so many people so uh i actually uh, i'm actually kind of relieved that my online growth does not reflect the growth of my church community because mm. if the church rises because of me it will fall when i leave mm. okay and that's not the point of the church and like i'm not interested in starting a, a cult in my youth group i'm interested <laughs> more in yeah i'm interested more in partnering with god in the kingdom and so i um so i am not threatened by by it at all you know but there are times where i'm like you know what it'll be really cool to have a little bit more growth here but whenever i think about that my knee jerk reaction is not okay i need to now produce more it's more who can i partner with to get it done because it's a different it's a diff, it's these these are different ministry contexts right so you got to know your context and if you know one thing that <laughs> i'm really really sensitive to is is these big personality cults of pastors you know like just in the last few weeks and months you've had so many uh so many pastors influential leaders just fall because of moral moral failures and 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 all these different things and you know like we need to pray for them we need to uh create spaces where they can grow and what not but i am um this is a whole different podcast for a different episode but like i i'm really just really cautious that like i i don't personally become like you know this guy who's just like this amazing pastor everybody go go listen to him no 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 that stuff yeah mm. i if that happens i'm grateful i'm grateful for the influence and i would see that as maybe god expanding my territory but i know i'm walking on very dangerous grounds if i were to think that it all it rises and falls on me so wow. it doesn't even what i have on tiktok is a gift from god so that's such a it's such a humble and such a just well-rounded healthy way of looking at things cuz some people might be you know looking for the platform that you have to say finally you know i've got my I've, you know i've got the platform that i can say exactly what i want to say but you're taking it from one i don't want church to revolve around me and two even what i have right now is a gift from god and i'm walking with that humbly yeah exactly because the last thing you want is for your platform to become your god mm to become your idol it happens so fast it happens so fast i know and like one of the things when this whole thing started to go viral like i legit had like an existential crisis i talked to my wife and i said what is happening right now like there's so much attention there is just so much like Uh, I, th- I, th- there are people following me like overnight like over a week i had about 30,000 followers like what do i do should i just quit like this is too much and so god and so i had to pause i had to really pause at the height of all of this stuff to just like reflect and pause like why am i doing this mm. what's the point mm. should i stop what, if not why why am i not stopping and so god had to like you know in a through conversations with my wife bless her heart um and conversations with some of my my ministry colleagues and uh, they just realize they just helped me realize that hey this could be a part of what god has called you to but also know that with influence with territory comes a strong temptation to idolize it so mm-hmm. be watchful and be mindful of that so yeah i love that and it sounds to me like you have kind of a community that's going to keep you accountable and uh, you know you have people at your church you have your wife that are just going to help you stay grounded and the fact that you weren't looking for this it kind of came upon you it seems like you're just even all the more qualified to carry it right mm-hmm. uh, so last question i'm going to give you know with kind of the last few months and the experience that you've gained you know what would you tell somebody or a church who's looking to be more contextualized in their ministry or a person who's looking to be more contextualized in their ministry you know what would your recommendation be if they wanted to start a tiktok channel or some type of ministry to reach people that they might nor- not normally come in contact with that's a great question um yeah uh, a couple of things like i've been <laughs> i've been kind of writing some notes down uh, as i've been trying to uh, figure out like what's working what's not a few things come to my mind and just take it or leave it type of thing and this works for me and, and by no means am i trying to universalize this experience for everybody else um if you're do, if if you want to start a ministry especially on tiktok 
uh, I think number one, it has to be obviously beneficial. Mm. Obviously beneficial. Now, what do I mean by that? Uh, obviously beneficial is is when you, when someone sees your content, uh, can they immediately recognize its value proposition? Or do they have to like work a little hard to kind of interpret what you're trying to say? So an example of an obviously beneficial type of content would be a food TikTok. Someone said, okay, let me teach you how to make a pumpkin spice chai. It's obviously beneficial. Like within the first second, you just know you are going to get a recipe on making a pumpkin spice chai. Uh, so, and you are actually solving a, a, a problem in the real world. And so in ministry, we have this challenge. People definitely need to find out uh, specific mm. pain points that they can solve with their theology. Gone are the days where you can expect that that when you start off your TikTok saying, you know what the word of God says in chapter three, you're done. You're done. Like <laughs> one second, you, because especially on TikTok, they're, for, they're scrolling through your for you page. And within the first second, you got to get their attention. Yeah. So if the first things that come out of your mouth are, you know, Jesus says, you're done. If, <laughs> if, 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 if the audience you're trying to, if you want to use the language reach, which I'm not, I'm not real. I don't like that language of reaching. Um, but if, if, uh, if you're trying to influence, so if you want to give value to people who are um, allergic to theology or Christianity, you don't start with the thing that they're allergic to, you know? And I'm not trying to say switch and bait. I'm, that's not trying to say, but to start and lead with a tangible pain point. Uh, the one example that I'm thinking about is this person, uh, this this church who, who they have TikTok kind of went viral. It's from a church, and they started off with just a question: "Hey, are you anxious right now?" Done. You know, it's like whoa, yeah. and so it kind of led into uh, a really nice kind of uh, a meditation on anxiety. And at the end, mm-hmm. and they and they didn't talk about Jesus the whole time. They just basically said, "Hey, I just want you to know that your story matters." And, um, and that, um, and then they kind of ended it like on a really nice note, and it was well wow. done. I'm like, oh, this is really, really meaningful. And you, you know, you've done it when you have people in the comments saying, "Yo, that's I needed that. Like that's really good." Okay, right? mm. so it has to be obviously beneficial. Okay, my friend, obviously beneficial. So if you want to be obviously beneficial to somebody, identify pain points. Number two, you have to be genuinely curious. Mm. You must. Uh, if you people can see right through your content. People can see right through why, why you're doing what you're doing. And you might think from your perspective of ministry that what you're giving is valuable. Like, hey, I'm giving them Jesus. I'm giving them gospel. But for them, that's poison. Mm-hmm. Because, because they have, maybe some of them have, uh, ha- have been really, uh, tr- they, they, their, their faith or their uh the understanding of God, their theology has just been so affected by trauma and abuse and all these different things which they're trying to figure out. And so the yeah. moment you say anything, it just triggers all that stuff, right? So, um, so yeah, you got to be genuinely curious uh, with your content. And what that means is to, it, to interact meaningfully with the people in your comments, to show more of yourself, to show your humanity, show your humanity before the, you, you show your theology. Um, if your theology is great, it'll show it in your humanity. You got, you know, just don't, yeah, reverse that, reverse the polarity in that thing. And so show who you are, show the person that you are. People need to see just the raw you, you know. And again, I'm not saying this to justify or or to say that, like, now you have to completely, you know, bury your soul on social media. Absolutely not. My wife is a perfect example of this. She, um... She's like, she's very, very careful of the things that she wants to share. Uh, I am kind of more of an open book. I'm kind of like, okay, what do you want to know? I'll literally tell you anything you want to know. Um, and these are two different ways of, you know, approaching social media. So know who you are, know what you're comfortable with, but share share something from that space where you're comfortable with. So be genuinely curious. And let people know that you are a human first. Some people try to be so Christian that they forget that they're human. Mm. I'm like, bro, like, come mm. on. You know, anyhow, so I'm going on a different rant. And the other is thing good. is it, and the other thing, and the last thing I would say is to, you know, is to be scripturally consistent, scripturally consistent, you know, especially on TikTok. Um, it's an, it's, it's an interesting place. The more 
the more you interact with the content, you will already know that there's just a lot of stuff that uh, that is inconsistent with the way of Jesus. Uh, mm-hmm. It's inconsistent with uh, how we imagine the good life to be from a gospel-oriented worldview. Um, and so the the tendency is for people to kind of jump on a trend and hoping that like it'll get the views. It will get the views for sure. But uh, but because it's not consistent with who you are, you are going to shoot yourself in the foot. Yeah. So and your theology. And so be scripturally consistent. And what for me what that means is is to jump on trends that I think uh, can really convey and communicate what I want to communicate through Chai, but at the same time also aligns with the way of Jesus. So uh, if there's an audio, for example, that has cuss words, I don't use it. You know, I don't have other, I don't have a problem with other people using cuss words in their in their audio. You know, because 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 they're orienting they're functioning from their worldview. You know, that makes sense mm-hmm. to them. Sure, you do that, but it doesn't. It's not consistent with mine, so I'm not going to use it, right? It's not consistent with who I am, so I'm not going to use that. If there's a trend that involves me doing certain things that, uh, uh, you know, uh, it's going to generate a lot of attention, but I know that it's not going to, uh, that it's not a good witness, I, I don't do that. Um, and like, mm. and I've had a lot of instances of people like, yo, Kevin, you need to jump on this trend. You need to, you must, you must. My mentions are full with stuff. And I can if I want to, but I'm not going to. That's not why I'm here, yeah. right? Yeah. So, um, so yeah, just genuinely curious. It has to be obviously beneficial. It has to be scripturally consistent. And the other, th- the, the last three things that I would say is really quickly, uh, be clear on your why. Why are you doing it? Are you just doing it for expression or for impact? Meaning, are you just doing this because you want to just share your life or you share your ministry? Or are you, willing, are you doing this because you want to solve a problem? Be clear on your who. Know who your audience is. Is it Christians? Is it Adventists? Is it Christians who have left the church? Is it Adventists who have left the church? Uh, is it uh, is it pe- like find a like construct a profile for the people, the person who you are trying to talk to, um, mm. and and speak specifically for that one, for that one person, not to the masses, not to the one hundred forty five thousand or the one hundred forty four thousand, no pun intended, <laughs> but for the one person, right? Uh, and then also be clear on your when, like when you when are you gonna post? What's your what's your schedule? How much? Uh, how much margin you have and all that stuff, and so yeah, I've given I've given a lot more than what you asked, but that those are some. No, of the things this is that come this is mind. great. This do not apologize. This is exactly <laughs> what I've asked for, because this is so helpful, and and right. I think uh, I hope everybody is writing down, you know, rewind and write down those points because that I mean, even when we approach any part of our life, especially this generation that I think is more entrepreneurial, right? You have to have a clear vision about. Mm-hmm you know, the market that you're trying to enter into, the people that you want to impact. And that's something that I, I talk with churches all the time. Your, your target audience can't be everyone, yep. right? Who do you want to reach? Everyone. Okay, we've nope. got to narrow this down to something more specific and having a very clear view of who that person is uh, also forces you to reflect on, well, who am I? You know, because mm-hmm. we don't just fit into the everyone crowd either. And I think it's, it's a really great exercise I'm, in fact, me and my friend were working on our vision board, something that I used to think was very, you know, I don't know, new agey. I'm like, no, I actually need to know where I'm going in my life. And I need to have like an idea of what that looks like, even if it's not what it turns out to be. Like I have to have something specific <laughs> to pray to God for and to be looking in that direction, of course, allowing him to make adjustments. But I think that what you're talking about is so beneficial for our audience. So thank you. Um, as we kind of wrap up, is there any last thoughts that you want to leave for our audience? You've already shared so much, and I'm so grateful uh, for what you have shared. Any last words you want to leave with us? Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to assume that most of the people who, who are listening to this is Adventists uh, or people who are, you know, and maybe some people who are not. If, if you're not Adventist, well, thank, welcome. It's a great podcast to listen to. Subscribe, please. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but if you're Adventist, let me speak specifically to you. And it doesn't matter how you define yourself as an Adventist, culturally, religiously, whatever. You're for the yeah, you're Adventist. I think. I think Adventism as a theological system is perfectly designed uh, for us to to meaningfully minister to people who are unfamiliar with the way of Jesus. Mm. Not just that, but also allergic 
to anything that smells or reeks of toxic christianity and toxic religion it is it's it's like cuz cuz you look at some other denominations too and you know there's some really good people believing different things but like i'm speaking for from adventism like if you look at look at the theology there's just so much good that you can if you just but pause and contextualize there's so much you can talk about you can talk about the sabbath you can talk about the second coming the literal second coming of jesus which a lot of christians don't actually believe in you can talk about the beautiful thing about the state of the dead the sanctuary message all of that stuff can be so contextualized so well So if you're adventist and you are worried that you're like you know what like I don't I don't think we are relevant anymore I would challenge you to do the hard work of of exploring your religious identity. Mm. I I I would you know just go d- dig deeper go into your history books. If you look at adventist history there's so much think so many so 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 much uh, history that that can inform how we can navigate through this cu- cultural climate right now um and and uh, so yeah speaking to adventists specifically and the other thing that i would also want to say is the extent to which you know your story is the extent to which you can meaningfully minister to other people in their stories period okay. Yeah. Regardless of who you are. You don't have to be a person of color. You don't, you know, whatever. Even white is a color. Come on, whatever. Just go. Just whoever you are. <laughs> just go explain like explore who you are. Explore your past. Explore the things that you are you are mad about. Explore things that you are concerned about. Not just the things that you want to do, but things that make you mad. Sometimes those those uh the 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 uh, reflections and, and the insight you get from the things that you're mad about can actually be really good fodder to like know where you want to go and what God has called you to do what God has wired you to do with your unique story. So, yeah, those two things. Adventism is a great story to which you can subscribe to and and to find yourself and the extent to which you can now uh understand your story uh, and explore your story and to also embrace it. Right? Is the extent to which you can now be released and liberated to minister to other people. in their in their stories regardless of who you are and what you're doing. Thanks so much for spending time with us as we discuss innovative means of ministry. I hope this conversation has inspired you to try new things. If you're not already following us on Facebook, YouTube, or Instagram, be sure to do so at Advent Next. You can follow our guest, Kevin Wilson, at Cross Culture Christian on Instagram and TikTok, and you can follow me at Kendra R Snow with an X. What subjects would you like me to cover next? Subscribe and leave a comment below. And see you next week.